Shemaya Wan with another quick study. This is going to be in the Holy Bible again, the 1611 edition. And uh, we're going to find out the difference between a dove and a raven and why Noah sent out a dove and a raven. Okay? So um, I like to get into these type of prophecies. They're simple prophecies. And you know, you don't have to go through all these different books. You know, you can stay right in the Bible. Because there's a lot of meat in this Bible. That's why I say you just got to dig. You have to rehearse the righteous laws, get understanding, and then you can start finding out the mysteries of the Bible. All right. A lot of things the Most High don't tell you. He puts it in the scriptures, but he just won't tell you right off the bat. You got to study and look for it within the scriptures. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's go to Genesis uh, I don't know, 8, chapter 8. Let me get this camera focused. Yeah, chapter 8, let's start at, we'll go to verse 1. Alright, and it says, And the most I remember Noah and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And the most I made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters as waged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. This is when the flood came on earth. And the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. All right, start, start. They stopped and they started seeping. Verse four. And the ark rested in the seventh month. So the seventh month is what Israel? You know, the new year starts with the spring. That's why they say April Fools. So the spring is the new years. So the seventh month will be what September. September as in siete, the seventh month. It says, On the seventh day of the month, or moon, upon the mountains of Ararat, and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, or tenth moon, which is what? Tenth month, decade, December, tenth month. Okay? In the tenth moon, or month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. So you can see the tops of the mountains from the ark. Verse 6, And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which, which went forth to and fro until the waters dried up from the earth. Okay, so the waters dried up from the earth when this raven went out. Okay, now why is that? Why would the raven go to and fro outside of the window, outside of the ark, until the waters were dried up from the earth, off the earth. There's a reason for that. Okay? And we're going to come to that. So I'm going to read verse 8. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. So now he's sending out a dove. He sent out a raven. Then he sent out a dove. Now I'm going to tell you why the raven didn't come back until the waters dried up. And I'm going to show you why Noah sent forth a dove. Okay. So let's go to Leviticus 1 and 14. Leviticus chapter. Leviticus chapter 1 and 14. And if the burnt sacrifice. For its offering. Let's see. For his offering to the uh, Hamashiach be a fowls. Then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. So these are clean animals. Doves and your stinky, filthy pigeons. All right. Those stinky pigeons that are in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Harlem, Chicago. All right. All these dirty cities. Cincinnati, Oakland, California, San Francisco. Dirty flying rats is what we call them. All right, and they defecate all the time. You know what I mean? Nitrogen type stuff. All right. Anyhow, 
but these are clean animals. They're cousins of the doves. So we're going to look in the dictionary. What does dove mean? Okay, we're going to go over here. This is a Webster's Dictionary. Not the best. Actually, the uh, front is all ripped off. This is Webster's New World College Dictionary, 3rd edition. Let's go to dove. Let's find out what the dove says here. Where is it at? So we know that it's a clean animal. Where is dove? Dove, 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 right here. Okay, dove. It says here. All right, all the Greek and all that stuff. Obscure, dark. All right, base used as a symbol of peace. Pigeon, look at that. Pigeon, smaller species. It is often, like I said, used as a symbol of peace. An advocate of measures. In international affairs designed to avoid or reduce open hostilities. I think the European Union uses a dove. The person regarded as gentle, innocent, or beloved. See that? Any peace uh, uh, corporation, they always kind of use the dove. All right, so so now we know why he used the dove. Let's go back. Genesis, Genesis eight and eight is where I think we left off. And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark. Now why would a dove return and the raven don't return? The raven found rest, but the dove didn't. It says here, For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days. And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. So this dove found what? An olive leaf. That's another symbol of peace. Alright, olive tree. So um, that's why the dove came back. Now I'm going to go into why the raven did not come back. Okay, where is that? Eight? Uh, seven. Let me go. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Remember what the scripture said in Leviticus chapter 11 that the raven is a dirty beast. All right. Um, verse 15. Leviticus 11 and 15. It says, uh, I started 13. And there are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the osprey and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind. So these are all unclean beasts, the raven. Okay? So let's find out exactly why this raven ain't come back. Let's go to uh, First Kings. First Kings, and, and believe me, Noah knew what he was doing when he sent out the raven. Okay, First Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilad, said unto Ahab, As the most, as Hamashiach, of, the most, of, the, of our power of Israel, liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to thy word, my word. And the word of the Hamashiach came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Verse 5. So he went and did according unto the word of the Hamashiach. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. He had faith. See, And the ravens brought him bread and See that? Bread and flesh in the morning. And bread flesh in the evening. Bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So these ravens are what? These ravens are carnivorous. So what was floating in the waters when the flood hit? What was floating in the waters? 
every beast that was drowned. Okay? Every beast, there was a smorgasbord out there. Smorgasbord out there for the raven. He was at a buffet. That's why he's going, he's going crazy. He's going to and fro. He had food everywhere. Okay? So this is a raven in the dictionary. Imitative of harsh sounds. Uh, one, this is a uh, chorus raven, so named from its tri, any of various large crows, especially the largest crow with a straight, sharp beak. Found in Europe, Asia, North America, black and lustrous raven. Uh, i go to the next one. Devour greed greedily, to devour greedily. One, to prowl hungrily, that's what he's doing, prowling. Search for prey or plunder, to devour food or prey, greedily. He was lusting, you see that? To have a voracious appetite. So that raven was at a smorgasbord. Alright. So that's a simple mystery. So that's why the raven didn't come back. And Noah sent that raven out there for a reason. Alright. So that raven. Wasn't going to come back as long as that. Uh, uh, animal fat was sitting in the ocean. So he sent the dove out to find out if land abated. If the water abated so. On the land, trees would start to uh, sprout, and uh, from there, you will find land. Okay, so I hope you got the understanding of this lesson. It's a real quick one. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, and uh, just think about all the brothers who got pigeon houses in their neighborhood. You don't see Chinese doing that. You don't see Japanese doing that. You don't see none of the other nationalities doing that, but who? Israel pigeons we got pigeon coops all right that's another prophecy a door door in the course I'm a, I'm a pigeon man anybody that's familiar with having um the pigeon bug know this is going to be amazing to all the other pigeon flies and uh, my friends that see me with the birds and um I just I wanted to do this because this is um this is a sport that I'm um, deeply involved in emotionally too we got some rare ones. They have these Iranian rollies. You know, I've been doing this since I was nine years old. You know, um, of course, people are, are more familiar with me being a fighter, but during um, the increment of my career, it's always been you see cameos of my birds or you hear me giving um, comments about my birds and in the interviews. I wanted to show you these beautiful white bars that this bird possess. Very rare. Blue, this dude could be a Levite. I'm trying to breed a bird that's black with the white bars. All these birds are bred for a particular art. Okay. What about these? These, these are tippets that bred for long distance flying. The, long, um, the flying tippet, the, the longest duration of record is 23 hours and 55 minutes before they, without even touching land, they fly. What do you say to people who say pigeons are a nuisance? I don't know. Some pigeons to me are a nuisance. I had some of my birds that want, don't want to fly in the stock, so he becomes a nuisance to me. But, you know, um, it's to each his own. It's because just like racism, people never want to have to take the chance to understand someone else, you know. So, of course, you're going to have some kind of hostility towards them if you have a, no kind of understanding with them. I can't believe it. I do these are my rollers right here. These are the babies. I let them get some air. I let them come out. They don't fly too much. It's like training for a fight, actually. You got to prepare the birds every morning for the 20, 70 mile flight. Got to drive, um, let them go, then time them back. And it's just, this is every day. It's just like a fight. This is every day. Same thing. They're flipping pigeons. I let everybody know I'm here.